Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus, the video series where we talk about functions defined on Rn. And in today's part 19, we will continue our discussion about local extrema and in particular we will look at some examples. However, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, as a reward for your support, you can download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, then let's start by recalling how we can find local extrema of a function f that is defined on Rn. So as before, we have n variables as an input and the real number as an output. And now what we do is that we fix a point in the input space and call it x0. There please note, x0 is a whole vector, so it has n components. Indeed, denoting different vectors with different indices is a common thing that happens, but there is some danger of confusion here. Therefore, please always check the context, such that you can see what the symbols refer to. Ok, but now here, x0 should be a critical point for the function f. And it simply means that the gradient of f at the point x0 vanishes. More precisely, it means it's given as the zero vector in Rn. Indeed, we already know for a continuously differentiable function f, this is a necessary condition for having a local extrema at x0. However, we have also learned if we have higher derivatives of f, we can look at the Hessian to get some sufficient conditions. Namely, if hf is a positive definite matrix, we can conclude that we have a local minimum at x0. Moreover, then we also know it's an isolated one, so it's the only one in the neighborhood. Ok, then on the other hand, if we find a negative definite matrix, we find a local maximum at x0. So we see, the Hessian, this special square matrix, in some cases can give us enough information such that it guarantees the existence of local extrema. Hence, in these cases, you only have to know how you can check for a positive definite or a negative definite matrix. In fact, there are different possibilities for that and in this video here, we will discuss some of them. And let's start with something that is easy to prove if we know some eigenvalue theory for symmetric matrices. Indeed, with that we have that positive definite is the same as saying that all the eigenvalues of the matrix are positive. So a given eigenvalue is strictly greater than zero. Here you should know that an n times n symmetric matrix has n eigenvalues and they are all real. So there are no complex numbers involved at all and then you can simply check for the sign of the real numbers. And then it should not surprise you that we find a negative definite matrix if all the signs are negative. In other words, knowing the eigenvalues of the Hessian helps us to apply these implications here. And that's what we will now do in an example. And as always, I want to keep it simple, so we choose a two-dimensional one. So it should be a function f defined on R2, which means it gets two inputs. And as always, we put that into a vector x with two components, x1 and x2. And then I want to have x1 squared plus three times x2 squared. So this is our function here and I would say to visualize it, let's simply plot it and as always, let's use Python for that. So now not so surprising, this should look like a parabola if we only look from one side to it. Moreover, from the other side, it should look similarly, so it's also a parabola, but we already see it's a different one. Indeed, this should not be a surprise because on the one side, on the one direction, we have a 1 as a factor and on the other one, we have a 3. However, for us now, it's only important to see that we have a minimum here in the origin. So from our picture, it's very clear, the only minimum should be there, but now the question is, how can we prove it? So now it means we have two things to do. First, we calculate the gradient of f and then the Hessian. In other words, 
we just have to calculate partial derivatives. So this should not be too hard, because we only have quadratic functions here. Hence, in the first component we have 2 times x1, and in the second component 6 times x2. So first the partial derivative with respect to x1, and then the partial derivative with respect to x2. And now for finding the critical points, we want that this is equal to the zero vector. So we have two equations to solve, and we immediately see this is only possible for the origin. So in summary, the gradient of f is zero if and only if x1 and x2 are equal to zero as well. So we see there is only one critical point. And now exactly for this critical point, we will examine the Hessian. Of course, we know it's a 2 times 2 matrix where we have the second order partial derivatives in it. More precisely, it means in the first column we have the partial derivative with respect to x1 of the gradient and in the second column we have the partial derivative with respect to x2 of the gradient. Therefore, it's not hard at all to calculate it. First we have 2, then 0, and then 0 and 6. So we see we have a diagonal matrix here. And for a diagonal matrix you should know that all the eigenvalues are exactly on the diagonal. Therefore checking our criterion here is now very simple because we immediately see we only have positive numbers on the diagonal. In other words this Hessian matrix here is a positive definite matrix no matter which point x we put in. In particular, it's a positive definite matrix if we put in the origin. Hence, now we can apply our sufficient condition from the start of the video and conclude that we have an isolated local minimum at the origin. Moreover, together with some knowledge of the function, we see it's also the global minimum. Okay, so this is the result here we have our minimum at 0, 0. Indeed, here I can tell you, if we talk about points in the domain, sometimes we write them horizontally like that. However, of course, this does not make a difference at all. Okay, with that I would say we are ready for the next example, because I want to change the first one a little bit. Namely, again, it should be a two-dimensional example, and now we look at the function f of x, where we first have x1 squared again, but then minus 4 times x2 squared. In fact, there you should see the difficulty for calculating partial derivatives here does not change at all. Therefore, I would say let's do this very quickly then. Now, for finding the critical points, again we have to calculate the gradient. Indeed, it's not a big difference from before, now we still have 2 and then minus 8 in front of x2. Again, this gradient should vanish and we immediately see this is only possible for the origin again. Hence, 0, 0 is the only place where we could find a local extremum. And again, the Hessian can tell us if this is the case. So I would say, let's immediately calculate our 2 times 2 matrix again. And as before, use the gradient and calculate the partial derivatives of it. Therefore, first we have 2 and 0, and then 0 and minus 8. So again, we have a diagonal matrix, so these are the eigenvalues, but the one is positive and the other one is negative. And there you should know, if we have these mixed signs, it means that we have an indefinite matrix. So please note, we don't have zeros as eigenvalues, we only have strictly positive and strictly negative eigenvalues. And this is then a so-called indefinite matrix. Indeed, for such a result we have learned in the last video that it means that we have a so-called settled point at the origin. In particular, it guarantees that we don't have a local extremum at the point. Also for this example I would say let's plot it. Also here you see it looks similar to the other example, so if we look from the side it's a parabola. However, you see the orientation here is that we have a hill, but if we look from the other side, you see it's more like a valley. And that's exactly what a settle point is, 
we have two different orientations. From the one side it looks like a maximum and from the other side it looks like a minimum. In other words, there is no local extremum at all. Hence, with this example we have learned that the Hessian can also show the non-existence of local extrema. The only problem we had here is that we had to know the eigenvalues. And indeed, this could be very hard if the Hessian is a very big matrix. Therefore, there is an alternative you can use to show that a matrix is positive or negative definite. This one does not need the eigenvalues and it is called Sylvester's Criterion. And that's exactly what we will discuss in the next video. So I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.